Now, as the human population is living longer, so are our pets. But how does this affect them and what can we do to ensure that they are living longer but still healthy lives? To tell us, please welcome back Dr. Alex Melrose. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Nice to have you here. Now, we haven't yeah. seen you for a while because you have been, let me get this right, you have back from a symposium yes. on geriatric ageing process of cats and dogs. Yeah, called gerontology. Seriously? Yeah, really. Wow, it's, it's, it. it's obviously an important topic for vets, some <laughs> due to our, our, <laughs> our ageing population yeah. of animals yeah. and vets. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and, and, and it was very interesting because the, the symposium had a lot of speakers from the human field as, as well as from the animal field because I, I guess the experts are uh, experts in both. There's very little really? difference between how we sort of uh, age and how cats and dogs age. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't have thought that. So how much longer yeah. are they on average living? Well, they, they're living, um, they've almost doubled the lifespan in the last sort of 20 or 30 years. So wow. these days the average cat or dog will live for about 11 years. And that's due to what we're feeding them, what, yeah. how we're treating yeah. them, what we're doing with them? Right, so, you know, fantastic medical uh, and surgical care, of course. Because he points to himself. Um, yep. And uh, by other people other than just myself, yeah. I'd be very busy. Uh, and, and nutrition, yeah. Okay. So it's made a massive impact to, to the lifespan of animals. So what was the key message that you got out of it? Uh... I guess the thing that was interesting was there's no magic, there's no, there's no magic wand, you know, just as there isn't for us. You, you, in fact, the more that these experts study things, the more that they find that um, nutrition and how nutrition impacts um, us at a cellular level and it impacts our cats and dogs at a cellular level, so it impacts the, the mitochondrial function within the cells, is really how we're going to be able to manipulate lifespan. Um, not with some sort of uh, gene therapy or, or something like that. Oh, that's fascinating because it yeah. all just does come down to things at a cellular level, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So what are some of the things that we find? What are, what are, what are the problems with ageing? Well, not necessarily the problems, but the, the disorders, shall we say. Yeah. Uh, uh, Challenges look, of ageing. Exactly. Well, all the body systems start to break down, you know. So you have problems with, uh, you know, cats and dogs will have problems with digestion. They have more vomiting, more diarrhoea. Um, they have a lot of muscle wasting. Um, and something that I'm dealing with at the moment. And, uh, you know, sort of just the uh, breakdown of strength and connect strength of connective tissue. Mm. And also a lot of ageing um, really affects the, the mind and how they function. And, and th we'll see our cats and dogs becoming um, senile. Well, and we also say that they become grumpy when they get old. Yep. It, it, you're yep. right. It is actually yep. exactly, you think about it, it is exactly the same for humans, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. All those things you just described. Yeah, some of their grumpiness will be pain. So some of that will be degeneration of the musculoskeletal system and mm. arthritis and stuff like that causing pain. So what are some of the things we can do for our cats and dogs to help them live longer but in the best of health? Yeah, well, I think getting regular vet checks, especially when they're older. So any, any pet over, say, eight, you, I think they should be coming in to see us, you know, twice a year. Okay. Because half, if you think about it, six months in a pet's lifespan is like three years for us. And I think a lot of things can change in an older animal at that, at that age. And then I, I think really, really good nutrition. Like when you talk about good nutrition, what, like getting them a good kind of food or yeah, feeding them yeah, different good, things? Yeah, yeah, good quality ingredients. So, you know, um, real meat. Mm -hmm. um, high, high quality, so it's a high quality protein source, not jamming them full of grains and things like that that they struggle to digest. So trying to get alternative carbohydrate sources like um, potato or something in the, in the um, food that they're having and then sh basically shoving them full of a, as much uh, fish oil or, or um, you know, f good healthy essential fatty acids um, and in some cases, some medium chain triglycerides as well, which is like a coconut oil. Yeah. Um, those kind of products, the more they have, the, the more they're finding out that those products have massive, massive impact on our cellular function. And how do you get those into your pet? I mean, it's hard enough to get fish oil tablets down me sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a good question. I, I think there's going to be more and more diets coming out on the marketplace that have that added to it. So it's already included in the, in the whole um, formulation. Mm -hmm. So start looking for that. So what are some of the advances, just quickly, what are some of the advances that you are really looking forward to uh, in vet care over the next few years? Uh, well, I, I guess I, one thing I've been interested in is stem cell therapy. And we, we do it at our clinic and we use uh, also stem cell activation um, factors and stuff. And that seems to be pretty cool as far as how you can take quite a geriatric animal with, say, kidney disease, arthritis, 
very chronic illnesses like that and then um, give them stem cell therapy and you can see some massive improvements in some cases where owners will come running in and say, hey, you know, you, you've turned back the clock wow. like five years on my pet. Wow. You know? That stuff gives you a real buzz. So I guess things like that and then um, just seeing how far they push the nutritional therapy. Mm in the future as it's well. It's important for your cats and your dogs and for your humans as well. Yeah, definitely. Hey, Alex, thank you. That was uh, really enlightening. Thank you very much. Our Dr. Melrose and his team. And talking of good pet nutrition, Yukonuba have recently made some great improvements to their diets. Check them out at yukonuba.co.nz.